Hey everybody, Anthony Anderson here, co-founder of Elite Resource Team, and in today's video I'm going to be talking about not only what is a family office, but how can we take the same concepts of a family office and use it to benefit our business and, of course, our clients. So let's start at the beginning. A family office, the Rockefellers are really credited with starting the first family office, and, and traditionally, a family office is applied to a very high net worth family, 50 to 100 million net worth plus. And the concept is I want to have all of my key professionals essentially under one roof. And so what does that look like? That looks like my tax, my legal, my financial, my investment team, all working together, focused on me, your only client. That's the purest form of a family office. Now, it's evolved quite a bit to multi-family offices where you might have an individual with a net worth of 20 million and it's not enough to justify just one of each of those professionals only working with that family, but maybe you lump together 10 or 20 of those types of families and then those professionals serve those families. So that's a multi-family office. You also have a, a virtual family office where you have those same type of professionals working together in a virtual environment serving their clients, or you have a multidisciplinary firm. That's another term you'll hear a lot about. The team-based model is what we've been referring to this concept uh, as since 2014. Let me give you an example of where this can benefit a client. I was having happy hour a couple weeks ago with a friend of mine. Successful real estate investor, I'm in downtown San Diego. He owns about 11 properties in San Diego, net worth around 18 million, and, and he was he was just complaining to me a little bit that every time he sells a new property, he gets all of these individual and relatively like separate uh, advice packages from his different professionals, right? The CPA is only concerned about what it's gonna do, the taxes, the financial advisor wants him to take the proceeds and invest in the market. The insurance agent's worried about the death benefit for his family, you know, and on and on. And so all of these individuals are giving him this separate advice. And this is what this represents. It's a typical way that professionals have worked with clients. And so what you see is the client is kind of here in the center, but it's really the client's responsibility to be communicating directly with their financial advisor, right? So the information is going back and forth between client advisor, client advisor, client advisor, or life insurance, or maybe an estate planning attorney, or a business attorney. Uh, their CPA, right? It's going back and forth between all of these individuals. What do you not notice on this? You don't see any communication like this, right? So the advisor is communicating the client. The insurance agent is communicating the client, but there's very little correlation between the different professionals. And, and unfortunately, actually, when there is, oftentimes it's adversarial, right? It's like the financial advisor is looking at the CPA as a deal killer. CPA is looking at the insurance person as somebody who's just trying to sell a product. So they're actually kind of like adversaries, which is the worst scenario for the client. So I was hearing my friend at Happy Hour kind of express the frustration with this type of communication going on. And I said, well, let me ask you this. If you had one trusted relationship out of all of those professionals, who would it be? And he thought about it for a second. In his scenario, he said the CPA. And statistically, that's what most successful business owners will say is their CPA. Usually because they don't perceive them as being somebody who's just trying to sell them a product. They see them as somebody they can go to and ask for advice. And so I said, well, what if you gave your CPA all of the responsibility of being the one that's communicating with your other professionals, gather the other information and the other suggestions from the other professionals, and then bring that to you and you can communicate with your CPA about all of these different ideas, making sure that it's, it's ultimately going through one channel. If you think about it like a doctor scenario, in essence, they're becoming a, a general practitioner rather than going to a, a heart surgeon who's communicating about your heart, a knee surgeon who's communicating about your knee, maybe your therapist who's communicating about your emotional state, and nobody's communicating with each other about what they're giving you, what they're prescribing you, what your symptoms are, looking at more of a, a holistic or a comprehensive view of your health. And so we can take this concept of a family office or of a multidisciplinary firm and apply it to the way that we work with clients 
and structure our communication with other professionals. And that's what I wanted to give you a diagram of here. So on this side of the whiteboard, I have broken down how a multidisciplinary firm would typically work with a client. In our firm, we, have, we are a multidisciplinary firm, right? So we have individuals all under one roof who are securities licensed, insurance licensed, attorneys, and accountants. So that allows us to have comprehensive conversations all around the table, really focusing on everyone's expertise and how do we pool our expertise to give the best advice for a client. So this same concept you can apply, even if you don't have 16 people in your office like we do, you can take that concept. They don't have to be employees or partners. They can just be strategic relationships that you've intentionally formed to be able to offer the same type of proactive, the same type of comprehensive planning and value that a very high net worth individual would get from their family office or that one of our clients would get from our multidisciplinary approach or any of the advisors that we've trained in our program how to use what we refer to as the team-based model. So let me show you what this can look like and how radically different it is from the typical client that's having to juggle a dozen different relationships. So here you have the client. And what you really do is you start changing the way that you're looking at yourself and the way that you're communicating your value to a client. You are saying, I operate a multidisciplinary practice. What that means is I'm not just coming in to sell you one product or to achieve one goal, for example, manage your assets. What I'm doing is I'm taking the time to really learn about you, your goals, your concerns, and then my team and I, and that's the key thing, my team and I will look at the information that you're providing us and come back to you with a more comprehensive uh, understanding of your financial landscape and how through our multidisciplinary relationships we might best help you accomplish your goals. Okay, So what does that look like? That means you then form strategic relationships. I think the most important one right out the gate is the CPA. So the first relationship that I would, I would focus on is between you and the CPA. And that is because, again, like I said on the other side of the board, statistically, the CPA is the most trusted advisor. And so the quicker you can establish a good CPA relationship, I think the, the easier it becomes to offer this multidisciplinary type of experience or a family office experience for your clients. Okay? And that doesn't necessarily mean that they have to be a $15 million net worth client. It just means that they're a client that would benefit from multiple professionals looking at their circumstance and using leverage to understand, our, can we strategically align our area of expertise to, to deliver better advice and a better experience for this client? So I would definitely suggest you need to have a CPA. Now, in your circumstance, you know, we have a lot of different people that follow our community. Some are Series 65 licensed, fee-only advisors. Some are Series 6 or 7. Some are life insurance advisors. So it will vary what you do here, but it doesn't actually have to change your value proposition. Whatever your area of expertise is, that still is your area of expertise. You still have a team behind you that supports the work you're doing with the client. Again, very similar to a family office. But you want to have other professionals in addition to the CPA. You want to make sure you have a good estate planning attorney. I would suggest a business attorney if you're working with many business owners, right? So you've got the, the attorney role, which is important. Banker, if you are working with individuals that you know, have a need for a personal banker, uh, a banker is an important individual to have on your team. Insurance, if you yourself are not the insurance expert, you need a life insurance expert on your team. And financial advisor, again, depending on what licenses you have, you may fulfill one of these roles or you might have to have somebody else on your team. Again, they don't need to be employee or, or a, a legal partner, but you should always have somebody that you can bring your client to, not give your client a name and a phone number and say, call this individual. That's not a multidisciplinary experience. That's a referral relationship. Again, put on your, your, your family office hat. You come to me and I can handle any of your questions or concerns, whether it's me, myself personally, or it's a member of my team, right? 
And what does that allow you to do? Why would you want to do that? Obviously, it's a better experience for the client, right? But the other thing is it really makes you sticky. It solidifies your role as becoming the client's go-to professional. And that's important because then it means the client is coming to us. What are we? We're no longer a commodity and we're irreplaceable. We're delivering a tremendous amount of value and we are irreplaceable. So we're, we're very sticky. In our scenario, that allows us to charge higher fees, determine which clients we want to work with and which ones maybe we, we don't. Um, and overall, again, carve out a, a unique value proposition for ourselves in the marketplace. So you've got an advisor, insurance agent, banker, attorney, CPA. Also, you want to have other types of niche specialists. Maybe that aren't in your backyard, but you want to strategically form a national relationship with. For advisors in our community, we provide all of these relationships for them. But somebody like an advanced tax planning attorney, that only comes in when a client's making $750,000 a year or more, or they're going to sell an asset worth a million or more, or they have a net worth that's a taxable estate, $11 million plus, right? So you want to have an advanced tax planning team. You want to have a succession planning team. Clients looking at selling their business in a year from now. What should we do now to make sure they get the maximum bang for their buck, plus they pay the minimum amount of taxes legally allowed? Uh, estate planning team. Obviously, you need a good estate planning team. So there's a lot of other professionals that you want to have. Payroll specialists, real estate agents, commercial real estate agents. These are all kind of a local team level that you'd want to form. And then you want your national team level that you're not going to find in every town. Captive insurance specialists, cost segregation specialists, R&D tax credits. You know, all of these types of strategies where you might only need to bring them in once a year, but you want to have somebody on your team to be able to fulfill the promise of this multidisciplinary approach. The way I would suggest you position yourself is as the team lead. Right, I'm the team lead, or I could be the advanced planning team lead. But that's me. This is the experience I offer my clients, and this is why Mr. or Mrs. Client working with me is radically different than working with Joe or Sally down the street. As our industries become more and more commoditized, robo-advisors and technology pushes down fees, we need to identify new ways to genuinely deliver value. I have yet to come across one that is as powerful as changing the client experience by taking off your simple financial advisor or insurance agent hat and focusing not on what can we sell, but on what problems does the client have, what concerns does the client have, and how can we, through a team approach, solve those problems. So if this video was helpful, please go ahead and like it below, give it a little thumbs up. Also, subscribe to our channel. Every single Friday, we release brand new videos like this with hopefully some thought leadership concepts, some ideas that you don't come across every day. So hit that little subscribe button. Every Friday, we post a new video. In the meantime, if you are interested as an advisor or an insurance agent on understanding, you know, rather than duplicating or, or trying to recreate this team from scratch, if you wanna work potentially with our team, understand what it's like to work with the team-based model, we did put together a 20 minute video. I'll make sure I include that link in the description below. And that is it for today. Look forward to talking with you in the next video.